The crystal tears are items that can be mixed around in the wondrous physic to create unique buff combinations that can be a real benefit to how you approach a situation. Among the massive amount of new content in the Shadow of Earth Tree DLC for Elden Ring, there are a total of eight brand new crystal tears for you to acquire, and some of them can completely change the way the game is played. Finding these tiers will definitely be something you'll want to do, but tracking down the locations is one thing, defeating the enemies that are guarding them is something completely different. Luckily, we can show you how to find these items, as well as how to battle the giants that stand in your way. How to Acquire Crystal Tears All of the crystal tears that you can find in Shadow of the Earth Tree are rewards for defeating the Furnace Golem enemies, which are the towering creatures that are found at specific locations around the Realm of Shadow. These walking giant structures can be quite the challenge to take down, but we have a few tips on how to tackle each of these furnace golems. The first tip we have is to check whether or not the furnace you're fighting is a normal furnace golem or one of the armored furnace golems. The former will have simple rope wrapped around their legs and can be damaged by attacking these legs. Armored furnace golems have metal braces around their legs and won't take any damage when attacked. Let's start with how to battle the normal golems. It might seem that battling these enemies is a crazy undertaking because of how much health they have, but this can be quite deceptive. Yes, attacking the legs doesn't do too much damage, but it will eventually lead to a stagger where the enemy falls to the ground and allows you to do massive damage with a critical strike. The best way to approach battling the normal furnace golems is to attack the legs and then jump over the flames when the enemy stomps its feet. Other moves to look out for are a swipe, a kick, and a grab along with a jumping attack where both of the golem's legs light on fire and it leaps into the air, giving off an explosion when it lands. There's also a move where the golem summons fireballs that will track towards you, as well as an attack that sees the golem drop to its knees and fire a tornado of fire in your direction. While you can tackle these fights on foot, you can also approach these enemies while riding atop Torrent, as you can use the Spectral Steed's speed to avoid the golem's attack, with his double jump being a great tool to avoid the stomping fire attacks. However you decide to attack these enemies, just keep up the attack on the legs until it falls over and take your critical strike damage. Repeat until the golem is defeated and take your crystal tier prize along with a furnace visage item. As we said earlier, you won't be able to do damage to the armored furnace golem by hitting them with your weapon as their legs are lined with metal. Instead, you will need to attack the opening at the top of the golem. In the surrounding area near these armored furnace golems are elevated positions where you can throw bombs into the open fire of the furnace. If you're able to get to a spot where you can throw hefty furnace pots, it can do massive damage if thrown directly into the opening at the top of the furnace. You can learn to craft these hefty furnace pots by getting the Greater Potentate's Cookbook 2 found near the Elak Great Bridge in the Gravesite Plain. From the Great Bridge north side of Grace near the abandoned Ailing Village, travel down the path that leads under the Elak Great Bridge. Not too far down the path is where you'll find the Rundown Traveler's Rest Shack, and it's on one of the bodies found here that you can get the Greater Potentate's Cookbook 2. Once you get the cookbook, you will need two Red Flesh Mushrooms, two Ember of Mesmer, and a furnace visage in order to craft the hefty furnace pots. All of the armored furnace golems are located near cliffs that you can reach with a spirit spring to get a perfect vantage point to throw these bombs into the creature and deal absolutely massive damage. Throwing three of these massive bombs into the top of the armored furnace golem will quickly defeat them. There are a total of two armored furnace golems that will require the use of explosives to defeat, while the remaining six are normal golems that you can take down by attacking their legs. Though, one of these furnace golems will require the use of a hefty furnace pot, and we'll explain why when we get there. With all of that covered, it's time to actually start hunting these golems and the crystal tiers they hold. Deflecting Hard Tier The earliest crystal tier you'll come across is found in the furnace golem that can be seen as soon as you enter the DLC. In the Gravesite Plain, you'll be able to see the giant that is carrying the deflective hard tier near the first Michaelis Cross, next to the three-path cross site of Grace, north of the Scorched Ruins. This is basically your introduction to the enemy type, so it is very much the most straightforward encounter against them. Which is why it shouldn't be a surprise that this is a normal furnace golem, so all you need to do is target the legs until you get your openings to get a critical strike. Once the golem is defeated, you'll get the deflecting hard tier. Even though it is found at the start of the Shadow of the Earth Tree and can be gotten within minutes of entering the Realm of Shadow, the deflecting hard tier is the biggest game changer out of these new crystal tiers, as it turns Elden Ring into Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. This crystal tier will allow you to perform perfect blocks with any weapon that, if timed perfectly, will negate all damage. So say you're two-handing a katana and then block an incoming attack without this tier active. 
The blade will block some damage, but since it doesn't have damage resistance, you will still take a hit to your health and stamina bars. With this tier active, you can now perform a spontaneous guard, or a deflection, by guarding right as an attack is just about to hit you. And like how in Sekiro doing these perfect blocks would build your opponent's posture bar, this will block all damage from the attack. The crazy thing with this in Elden Ring is that it also works with a shield, so you can still use a shield and get the benefits of the tier. There's also the added bonus that immediately after successfully performing a spontaneous guard, guard counters will be strengthened for a brief amount of time and can stack up to three times. Each consecutive perfect block will double your guard counter attack power, with the first block upping the attack by 20%, a second subsequent block bringing it up to 40%, and then maxing out at 80%. This will allow you to counter back your opponent with enough power to make them think twice about attacking you again. This effect lasts for 5 minutes before it needs to be reactivated. Viridian Hidden Tier Before we start heading north into the Skadu Altus, let's cover some of the hidden furnace golems found off the critical path. The first one we're going to cover is found just outside the Cerulean Coast to the south of Gravesite Plain. Reaching this area isn't as straightforward as crossing a bridge and braving a castle, so let us walk you through how to get here. Go to the castle front site of Grace across the Ilac Great Bridge and just outside Castle Ensis in the northeast part of Gravesite Plain. From here, follow the dirt path to the southeast. You'll eventually pass through a small soldier camp and you will see a cliffside to your left. Stick along this cliffside and you'll find several rock platforms leading to an area below. Head down and once you're at the bottom, you'll find yourself in a poison swamp. To the south of this swamp is a cave opening that is guarded by a Miranda Sprout flower enemy. Get past the flora and enter a small cave. Follow the cave until you reach the exit next to the Ilac River Cave site of Grace. Once you pass the Grace and leave the cave, you'll find a waterfall to your left with a series of rock pillars that you will need to jump across to find another waterfall. Follow the path on the left and keep following this stone path until you reach a third waterfall, at which point you will see the Ilac River downstream site of Grace. You will need to go across a stone bridge to reach the ground below. Patrolling the pond is the Furnace Golem, which is once again a normal golem. The arena is quite sizable, but not as big as the open field of Gravesite Plain. Defeating this golem will reward you with the Viridian Hidden Tier. This tier is one of the most straightforward buffs in the DLC, and one of the shortest lasting. The Viridian Hidden Tier will negate all stamina consumption while it's active, meaning no matter what you do during its duration, your stamina bar will never drop. This is a pretty small window, as the effects of this tier only last for 15 seconds, so you will need to have a plan ahead of time and drink your physic right before you head into battle to get the most out of this buff. Gloveworth Crystal Tier This is another crystal tier that is found far from the DLC's critical path, hidden behind a dungeon beyond a region of dragons. You will find your first armored furnace golem in the region called Charo's Hidden Grave, found above the Cerulean Coast. This hidden grave area can only be accessed by traveling into Jagged Peak. To reach this area, head back to the castle front site of Grace and then make your way to the Pillar Path Waypoint site of Grace to the southeast. From this Grace, take the Southern Path. At the end of this path is where you'll find the entrance of the Dragon's Pit Cave. Make your way through this cave and jump down into the Deep Hole to find the ancient Dragon Man boss fight. Once you get by this boss, you'll exit to find yourself at the foot of Jagged Peak. In front of you is a small pond with a Jagged Peak Drake resting at the center. From here, head south and go past the ginormous Dragon Corpse at the Grand Altar of Dragon Communion. Once you reach the area of Red Flowers, just keep heading northwest to enter Charo's Hidden Grave. Go past the Charo's Hidden Grave site of Grace and go to the west to find the Armored Furnace Golem. Go up to the westernmost cliff by using a Spirit Spring and start throwing your hefty furnace pots into the top of the golem. If all three bombs hit, you'll bring down the foe and get your Crystal Tier reward. The Gloveworth Crystal Tier is a go-to choice for players who love to use their Spirit Summons. This crystal tier will increase the attack power of your spirit ashes by 20% during its 3 minute duration. This works for spirits that are summoned after the physic is activated, as well as any that were summoned before this buff is used. So no matter when you use either your spirit ash or the physic during a battle, you'll be able to reap the benefits of this item. Crimson Burst Dry Tier Now that we've gotten those last few crystal tiers out of the way, let's continue past Castle Ensis and make our way toward the Shadow Keep. Make your way to the Skadu Oltus region to the northwest of the Gravesite Plain and you'll quickly see your next target. This Furnace Golem patrols outside the Shadow Keep, the legacy dungeon of the region, and towers over a nearby soldier camp. The space that you battle this golem is narrow compared to the open field in which you battled the first Furnace Golem. 
There is also the added factor that there are some enemies around the camp, so you'll want to take out them first so that your full focus is on the golem. Though, you can just head right for the golem and rely on the giant's attacks to take out the enemies if you'd like. Outside of the change in arena and the enemies around you, this fight is just like the first one. So target the legs and take down the hulking structure to get your hands on the Crimson Burst Dried Tear. This crystal tier is a great tool for co-op players who like to use their spirit ashes to help them in battle. While this tier is active during its 3 minute duration, it'll provide a healing aura that'll provide a health regen effect to any and all allies that are standing near you. Cerulean Sapping Cracked Tier Staying in the Skadoultus, you're gonna want to head to the southeast of the previous Furnace Golem until you reach Morth Ruins. Head to the southern part of the ruins and you'll find a hole that you can descend down. At the bottom, and through a small cave, you'll find a ladder that'll take you to the hidden Bonnie Village. Make your way to the bridge at the northeast end of the village, and cross it to find the bridge leading to the village site of Grace. From here, follow the dirt path and head past a pack of wolves, and through a hole in a cliff, to find another armored Furnace Golem. On the left of the area that you enter upon coming out of the hole in the cliff is the Spirit Spring, which will take you up to a high cliff that lets you see right into the top of the golem. Wait for the giant to get close, and then start throwing your hefty furnace pots into the top of the golem. If you hit it with three bombs, the golem will fall, and you will get the Cerulean Sapping Cracked Tear. The Cerulean Sapping Cracked Tear is active for 45 seconds, and during this time you will be able to regain Focus Points, or FP, when you land attacks on your enemies. While this doesn't work with spells or projectile-based Ashes of War, using any melee-focused Ash of War will allow you to recover some of the used FPs as long as you hit your target. Oil Soaked Tear the next two crystal tiers are found right next to each other, and could be considered the most well-hidden out of all of them, considering you need to take a secret passage to access it. The first step to reach this area is to head into the Shadow Keep Legacy Dungeon in Skadoaltus and make your way to the area with the burning boats. This is found right before you take the elevator that leads up to the storehouse first floor site of Grace. So if you've already been to this Grace, you can fast travel there and then take the elevator down. When facing the elevator, take a right and you'll find an opening along the left wall that is a ladder that leads to the water below. Behind the waterfall is another ladder that leads into a secret area below the castle. In the room to the left of the ladder is where you'll find the Domain of Dragons painting, and to the right of the painting is an illusory wall. Follow the passage behind the wall until you find a coffin that you can interact with and climb into it. After a short cutscene, you'll arrive in the lower river portion of Skadoaltus. Exit the cave that you arrive in and rest at the castle watering hole site of Grace. Head south of this Grace, and among the many furnace golems, one will awaken, and it's up to you to put it back down. This arena is a decent size, but the scattered pieces of other dead golems might snag you as you move around, so just be aware of them. Target the legs of this regular furnace golem and you'll eventually vanquish it. The Oil Soaked Tier is one of the more fun crystal tiers, and you can turn builds that revolve around fire into absolute monsters. This tier will last for one minute and will allow you to coat any enemy in oil by simply touching them with your character's body. Just make sure you really press yourself against them and wait for the visual cue that the oil is applied. But once it is, time to ignite the flames. When the oil is applied, all fire damage dealt will be increased by 20%, which can help you burn through many enemies' health bars with ease. Blood Sucking Cracked Tier the next Furnace Golem is the most unique in the bunch, simply because it shares the arena with another Golem and, despite not being an armored Furnace Golem, it does require a hefty Furnace Pot. To the east end of the Watering Hole is a location known as the Ruins of Unt, and in an area filled with corpses of Furnace Golems, the giant Golem slumped against the ruins might seem to be just a piece of window dressing for the area. This Golem, however, can be brought back to life. When facing the Golem, go to the building to the left and get onto the roof where you can look into the top of the Golem. Take one of your hefty furnace pots and throw it into the top of the golem to ignite it and resurrect it. Like the mad scientist you have now become, it is up to you to kill your own creation. When defeated, you will get the Blood Sucking Crack tier, which functions similarly to the power within Pyromancy from Dark Souls, as it increases your damage for all attacks while also draining your health over time. During its 3 minute duration, this tier will increase your attack power by 20%, allowing you to absolutely decimate any enemy in your way. For those who can manage the small ticks of constant damage, with either another tier allowing for damage recovery or just using your flask at the right time, this tier can be an absolute game changer. Crimson Sapping Crack Tier The eighth and final crystal tier is found in the ancient ruins of Rao, the region found beyond the Shadow Keep. Make your way into this lush jungle and progress until you reach the Rao ancient ruins east side of Grace. There is a nearby bridge where you will see the Furnace Golem awaken as you attempt to cross. 
This final golem is an armored, so cross the broken bridge, close the distance between you and the giant, and start wailing on his legs. Eventually, the last golem will be defeated, and you will have rid the Shadow Realm of these fiery giants and completed your tier collection with the Crimson Sapping Crack tier. The Crimson Sapping Crack tier, despite being the crystal tier found furthest in the DLC's critical path, is one of the most simple, as it functions similarly to the Cerulean Sapping Crack tier we found earlier. While this tier is active, it'll provide you with just under 1% HP recovery upon a successful hit on an enemy. This doesn't stack when hitting multiple enemies or changes depending on what kind of attack is used. This tier is active for 45 seconds. Having now traversed far and wide across just about all of the Shadow of the Earth Tree DLC and taking down some of the fiercest foes in the Realm of Shadow, you now have all eight crystal tiers introduced in the expansion. If this video was helpful, make sure to leave a like, and with so much still to cover in Shadow of the Earth Tree, leave us a comment down below with any suggestions on what you would like us to cover. Also, make sure to subscribe to Gamer Ranks for more guides on Elden Ring and other games in the future.